Welcome to the Merry People Podcast, where we help you make marriage real, fun, and simple. Each week, we have honest conversations about one simple thing that can make your marriage better. Because when your marriage is better, everything's better. I'm CJ, and this week, we're talking about how we can empower our spouses. Now, Of course, empowering your spouse is something all of us want to do. We want to set our spouses up to be all that they can be and be the best that they can be. But what does that really look like? Well, my co-host, Ted Lowe, recently had a chance to sit down with Mike Owens to talk about this. Now, Minister Mike Owens is founder and CEO of Groundbreakers, a youth leadership development organization and a youth and young adult outreach ministry in the Atlanta area and abroad. Mike is also the senior pastor and founder of Evolve ATL. And not only that, Mike Owens is also a regular contributor to Merry People, the team who brings you this podcast. Now today, we're really excited to be sitting down with Mike because he gets really real and honest about how he strategically empowers his wife, something he admits he hasn't really always done well. And then he gives us practical steps on how we too can empower our spouses as well. So let's go ahead and dive into this interview between my co-host Ted Lowe and Mike Owens. Mike, thanks for being here, buddy. Man, I'm excited. Thanks for having me. It's always an honor to do a show with Ted Lowe. <laughs> we're doing the show with Ted Lowe. <laughs> yeah, I just said if we could find Mike for today. So we're at a, we're at a conference together, and I saw him and uh, tackled him and said, hey, can you come and, and share with us? You've shared a lot with married people, you and Shamika, over the last couple of years. Yes, sir. And uh, in our small group study, and then we created resources for people to be able to have one night events at their church. And you are one of our communicators. Yeah, I believe uh, through Clear and uh, this is uh, your, your best us. Our, your best us. We yeah. get confused with a television show yeah. all the time. Yeah, you know, these two are always. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, a huge part of that. I think you got recognized a couple of times. I noticed earlier in the lobby. For, yeah, it's for funny. Your work. You know, walking around, people walking up to you saying. Hey, I know you. Where do I know you from? <laughs> and so we're going through all these different things about, you know, this or that. I'm naming this. I'm going back into my childhood days and everything. <laughs> so I only to come back to find out, you know, I have done some stuff with Mary. <gasps> That's it. <laughs> we hear from you every week. We're you're on the DVD on the screens. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. All right. Well, cool. You know, I love it. I so was, it's been pretty I was, funny. I think it's going to be just bald guy confusion because I don't know about yeah. you, but I'll speak and people will go like, Dude, you are remind me. You look just like, and it's always some new. Yeah, person. Like, of course. We're just like I get. I get the whole. You know, for those of you who are listening, I am an African American young man. So everybody says to me, "It's Damon Wayans, <laughs> the comedian." They think I look like Damon Wayans. So, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I don't see it, but I guess the bald head and the goatee. Yeah, we look like we could be brothers. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Me and Ted definitely could be brothers. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's a light skinned version of my lighter skin. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, white chocolate in the building. White chocolate <laughs> in the building. So, Mike, tell our listeners a little bit about you. Give us a little bit of background. Well, you know, I am married. I've been married for 16 years. We just celebrated um, 16 years. I have four children, and I have three grandchildren, which normally shocks everyone. So, it's shocking me right four, now. <laughs> <laughs> four, yeah, four children. My oldest daughter is 26 years old. I have a 10-year-old son. I have a 9-year-old daughter, and I have a 5-year-old son. And, and then I have grandchildren. One is six years old, older than my youngest son. And then I have two grandchildren that are twins that are just born a year and a half ago. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting dynamic there. So I got a grown kid and a bunch of kids at the house. You've been and you and Shamika have been in ministry. Uh, you've been a pastor. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yes. We've, you know, we've been in ministry. I've, I've probably been doing uh, family pastoring ministry for probably 23 years or more now. Oh. Family, student, youth, uh, young adults, things of that nature. Uh, 23 years or more now. Then we've been pastoring, actually senior pastoring for about two years now. So we kind of launched an outreach church uh, probably about two years ago and We've been doing that, and it's and interesting enough, it's it's kind of evolved, which is the name of the church is called Evolve ATL, but it's kind of evolved into a young adult church, so we now call it Evolve Millennial Church. Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, Evolve Millennial Church in Douglasville, Georgia, and uh, 
it's been an amazing journey. Uh, we also launched a ministry in Kampala, Uganda. So we got Evolve Uganda, you know, which is wow. crazy. We do all that through technology and people gather in the space over there. We stream in, we teach, we love on people. Mm. We send resources over there, resources over there to purchase a building. It's, it's been crazy. I don't even know how we do it. It wasn't my plan. It just mm. showed up. And uh, so... That's a little bit of mystery. I was now I was definitely a youth pastor for 14 years of a large mega church uh, uh, here in Atlanta. So did that forever in a day, you know, working with teenagers and so you know, in high school. Yeah. And I want to talk about that, but I'm going to back you up just for a second. Mm-hmm. When you say the millennial church, talk a little bit about how do you feel like what does the church need to do different for for millennials? I think that we need to listen to them. I think that we do a poor job at hearing their voice. Mm. And then the second thing is once we hear their voice and uh, we do a poor job at executing on some of the things they believe should be implemented. You know, most millennials right now are into action. They're not into a whole lot of talking. Mm. They are not into monuments. They are into movements, Mm. meaning they don't like, they, they're not into monuments. They're into movements. They don't like tradition. They're just not there. They really are into how can we provoke change? Mm. What can we do to really be the church? Not just say we're the church, but what can we do to be the church? So how do you think that they see marriage differently than say our generation when it comes to, are you learning anything from Mm -hmm. that? Like you said, Mm -hmm. I know a lot of them aren't married, but for those that are, are thinking about talking about marriage, Mm -hmm. what are you hearing from millennials about marriage? You know, a lot of them are just kind of moving quick, jumping into Mm -hmm. the marriage thing without all the tools. You know, Mm -hmm. I think that they're just, I think they're just, again, they're just those type of, they're making stuff happen and they don't want to really go through the process. So they skip the process. The other side of it is some of them are not really valuing marriage because they've seen the demise in it, that there's so many people divorcing right now, especially in the church, in the Jesus culture, you know, the ones that are supposed to represent what marriage, the epitome of marriage is. You know, unfortunately, we have one of the highest divorce rates happening in the church. And these young adults see that. So they're like, well, you know, I don't know if I want to invest in that. We can just live together and, 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 and make it work or we can be together forever. And just, you know, it's, it's interesting. But when I asked you about this podcast and I said, OK, we always want to make marriage real fun and simple. Yes. I said, what is one thing you said? I want to encourage people to bring out the best of their spouse or to empower their spouse. Talk a little bit about that in your own life. I came into my marriage. First of all, I wasn't prepared. I thought I was ready to get married, but I honestly got married for all the wrong reasons in the beginning. Because at that time, you know, when you're in the church, the church makes, unfortunately, they cause people to make very unhealthy choices in marriage. You know, they pressure you to get married or that's what you're supposed to do or ring by spring or all this other stuff. Wait, I mean, say that again? Ring, ring by spring? Ring by spring. What you does know? that mean? <laughs> you know, back in the day, they used to have this thing. They're just like, get a ring by spring. That just means, you know, find you a spouse, get married by spring. It was just a little joke, but... Right. But they kind of still kind of meant something around, you know, um, or, uh, you know, we we don't give people the time to develop with one another. And uh, God said, the Lord said, this is my husband, my wife, things of that nature. That goes on a lot. I don't know if I know in our culture it does, you know, and it's like, you know, <clears throat> You got to give people time to develop. And we, unfortunately, didn't have that time to develop. You know, I had a lot of uh, friends and mentors say, hey, you know, you need to go ahead and get married. You're in full time ministry now. And it's not good for you to be without a wife in ministry and da da da. So so you feel this pressure and you you make the decisions a little quicker than you need to Mm. um, because you didn't take the time to really get to know each other, to really develop with one another, to really become friends, to really have chemistry. You know, a lot of people religiousize it and spiritualize it, but there's a, a natural side to it too. You need to be attracted to each other. You need to like each other. You need to have some type of chemistry with one another. You know, the other side of it was also is that it was just modeled to me wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, the model I saw in marriage was where the husband was very controlling and dominant and uh, he's the king of the house and everybody bowed down to him and did what he said do and the wife was very submissive and uh, uh, did what he said and submitted to him and, and, and all that kind of stuff I mean that was the model 
So I took that model into my marriage sure. in the very beginning, you know, uh, where I really, you know, it was my way or the highway. And, you know, uh, I knew everything and I'm the priest of the house. That's what the Bible says. And, you know, wives, submit yourselves to the husband. And that always you know, goes well. All that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, so all yeah. that all that time, you know, I was doing that and, and, and thinking I was leading right when I was really leading very wrong. Because in the midst of it, what happened was over years, my wife, then you started seeing her confidence begin to get chipped away at. Started seeing that she started fading into the back because her voice had no presence in our home. You know, it just didn't have a presence. You know, mm -hmm. I would always crush her voice with, 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 with what I thought was the right way and what I thought was the final answer of what we should mm -hmm. do. And unfortunately, I saw my wife's confidence get crushed. I saw her start to change. I saw her start to lose value in her own self. I saw her, saw her start to think that uh, she can't do anything right. You know, I'm never pleased or she don't have a mind of her own or, you know. So now you, you, you look and you see that this, this beautiful woman you have, her eyes have sunken, her countenance has changed, her posture is different. And you're like, wow, what happened here? Mm. And uh, so the spirit of God honestly began to deal with me about my wife. And, you know, I, I've been in ministry for a long time. I trained a lot of women. They're successful. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And he said, hey, I want you to look at all these amazing women you've trained. They're doing amazing. And then I want you to look at your wife. And when I turned to look at my wife, I realized that I had not invested in her what I invested in so many others, especially for those who have said ministry. See, we can be one way in ministry. We treat everybody a certain way. We respond very graciously to them. We smile when we're talking to them. But then when it comes to our spouses, man, we going in, we're yelling and frustrated and, you know, not even smiling and angry all the time. And, you know, it's, it's just unhealthy conversation. So once uh, God dealt with me about that, I, knew that I needed to sit down and repent to my wife. I knew that I needed to have a very real conversation with her. I just came home and sat down and, and I remember I started sharing with her what I felt like God was telling me and that I, that I neglected her and that I wasn't investing in her as much. This minister, Mike, preacher, extraordinaire, traveling around the country, leading, building an amazing youth ministry, volunteers are phenomenal, great office staff, all this, and at home, hmm. your failure. At home, you're not the man that you need to be. So I sat and I shared with her what I thought and what I felt. And I said, I'm sorry. I want you to know that I, I, I've seen that I have invested so much in so many other women that have neglected you in the process. I've seen, and, and, and again, so as I began to share these things, she just broke down crying mm. like really hard, which let me know that I had hit a very tender, deep, mm. dark space that she had been dealing with for quite a while. So I made it a point. I told her from this point forward, I will not do that ever again. I'm going to take and I'm going to be very intentional about investing in you, my wife, my queen. I'm going to adjust my calendar. I'm going to be home at a certain time. I'm going to, because in ministry, I'm everywhere, gone all the time, never home, get home late at night. I'm tired. I don't want to be bothered. Hey, I'm going to man land. I need to debrief. I need to down, I need mm. downtime, you know, and, and so you never engage your family. Then next, you know, you go to bed and you sleep, then you get up in the morning and you start the day all over again. You do the same thing again. Then you come home again. You don't want to be bothered you're tired you've given out to the world and they're getting your sloppy leftovers and I decided I'm not doing that anymore hmm. I'm going to really be intentional about investing time in my wife I'm going to be intentional about getting home at a certain time I'm going to be intentional about sitting down having dinner with my wife at the dinner table hmm. so that we can have healthy conversations with one another as opposed to having conversations in passing I'm going to be very intentional about making sure she's standing by my side and not behind me not under my feet, you know, mm. a good woman has your back. No, a good woman stands be to your side. She, she, she stands beside you. She shouldn't have my back. She should have my front and my side. She mm. should be right just as present as I am. Mm. She needs to be just as present, you know. So, so that, 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 that's been a lot of investment, and, and, it, and it has shown. My wife 
she's absolutely blossomed, man. Now mm. she's speaking to other women. She started a ministry called Campaign to Love, which is about empowering other women. So I've been supporting her with that and mm. helping her get that off the ground. And she's been doing her hair differently and she's been dressing differently. Her smile mm. has changed. Mm. Our love making has become so much more intense and intimate now, and now deep. Just, you know, if they're jogging right now or driving their car, they've just pulled over and go, I'm, say that again. Love I'm this. I'm trying system. to yeah. tell you. Yeah. It, 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 the love making became a lot greater because it's, it goes beyond physical. Now, now it's so deep and emotional mm. and intimate. You know, it's, it's coming from such a pure place and not mm. just a habit or not that a marriage obligation, you know. No, I really want to make love to you because I love you so much. We probably have sex probably at least... Every day, with the exception of maybe one or two days in the week. And I am not kidding. Like, I am not kidding. Now, here's the deal. Here's another nugget while I'm talking about this. I know I'm saying a lot, but think it. I want to point this out. Even in the midst of all of that, do you know my wife never denied me sexually ever in our marriage? I know it's rare. I know most people can't say that, but I can honestly say that mm. any time I asked her, she accommodated even though we weren't happy and we were going through all this stuff way back mm. even then, she always accommodated. Mm. But because, now it's different. But now it's very different. It's, it's, more, it's beyond just accommodating. We are making true love because I invested in her as my wife. Mm. I invested in her like I made her the priority. Here's what God told me. It's none of your business how she treats you. Mm. That's none of your business. It's all of your business how you treat her. Come on. Come on. Tell it again. That's what he told me. Tell it again. And then, you know, and, and these are things I'm putting in this book I'm writing on marriage. But, and, then, and, then, and then he said, it's none, of, it's none of her business how you treat her. It's all of her business how she treats you. Like, in other words, if I focus on how I treat her, I don't have time to focus on how she's treating me. Right. No matter what, no matter what she does, I choose to respond in love, or I choose to respond a certain way as her husband, as her man. Mm. You know, I, I make that choice. And when God deals with me, honestly, he's never really dealt with me about her per se. He's never said to me, you know, she, she, you, know you were right, she was wrong. Mm. He's never done that with me. He's always said, hey, son, here's where you missed it at. Mm. Hey, here's where you need to look at. Or, hey, son, you know, I think you need to spend a little more time with her today. Hey, son, are you paying attention to your wife's countenance today? He did this here recently. You know, uh, I was busy, busy, busy. He said, hey, son, have you paid attention to your wife's countenance? Mm. And then and, and I hadn't. And I looked and I thought, oh, wow. So I asked, hey, baby, what's going on? And then found out she was dealing with some other things. It had nothing to do with me, but just mm. found out she was dealing with some other things. And I sat down and I was able to minister to her in that area. Why? Because the Spirit of God said to me, pay attention to your wife's countenance. Mm. You know, these little things that he talks sure. to you about concerning them. Hmm. He don't talk to you about you. He's constantly talking to you about, I mean, he don't talk to you about them. He's constantly talking to you about how you are to serve them. At least that's been my experience. Yeah. I don't ever hear him say, yeah, you know what? You were right. You know, she was wrong. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that message myself. Doesn't happen. Yeah, not happen. You know, I think that's when you think about Christian marriages in in non-Christian marriages. I think we have so, as Christians, we've so gravitated into the realm of the, the culture that we just kind of do marriage the same way. Yeah. And, you know, I need you to meet my needs and 50-50 and all those different things. But the way God calls us to love each, our spouse is pretty radical. It's pretty, it's like not, you know, it's not based on how they're behaving toward us, but how Christ behaved toward us. And so yes. that's, a, that's a world changer right there. That's a, not, no I pun mean, intended right there. I mean, that, no, the, but the but game changer. There, is, right? Think about the word. You know, he mm. says, husbands, he addresses us. Yeah. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. But here's mm. the thing. Then he goes on to say, and gave himself for it. Mm. That's, the, that's the important part of that verse. Mm. He gave himself. In other words, he died to his own self mm. and his own will in order that her will might be taken care of. Mm. Jesus died to his own self and his own will in order that we might receive the benefit. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. So he tells us, you got to give her the benefit. Hmm. Die to yourself. Here, and here's the other thing. I'm, and I know I'm saying a lot. Jesus, just oh, stuff coming up. Great. Go. Just stuff coming up. I found that the root cause to every problem 
in a marriage, to me, is selfishness. Hmm. Agree to that. Yep. If, if, you, if you boil it, if you sit down and really boil down every challenge and think about it, hmm. it's always going to come back to somebody wasn't willing to die to the will of the other. Yeah. Somebody wasn't willing to give up something so that the other can have what they needed. Hmm. Somebody was being selfish in that moment. I either, either I want to get my point across because my point is the greatest. I want to have the last word. I want to go where I said we're supposed to go. Mm. I want to do what I said we need to do. I want, you know, it's, it's, it always seems to come back to this place of selfishness where we have not been willing to die to our own will mm. so that the other person's will can live. Mm. Jesus gave himself, died to his own will. Die to even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, please take this cup away from me. I don't want to do this. That's His will. Nevertheless, not my will. Now I'm eradicating selfishness. Thy will be done, so that these people can receive what they need. And it plays itself out, right? This plays itself out in really day-to-day interactions and yes. different things. It's you know this is a big yes. ethereal thing we're talking about, but it's you know it's. All the little things. Like, yes. speak to that just a little bit. Why are the little things important when it comes to this dying to yourself? Um, you know, you know, there's an old saying that it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. I think is how it mm-hmm. goes. It's those little things that you don't pay attention to that end up showing up in your marriage later on. I had a guy tell me one time, man, you know, my marriage failed me last night. I said, what? My marriage, man, it just failed me. I need to talk to you. I said, well, you know, your marriage didn't fail you last night. It's been failing. It just showed up last night hmm. because you neglected all the small things that were giving you little warning signs that this is happening. And then now it showed up as this big, huge thing. So the small things, you know, uh, and I'm making it very practical. You know, uh, I think about a week or two ago, man, I cooked dinner Friday three or four days in a row on purpose. Because my wife always cooks dinner. But I just recognized that she had been really going hard with the kids and helping them with homework and getting them up in the morning. And I'm running around and teaching and leading and doing all that stuff. And I thought, I want to give her a break. Hmm. I'm going to cook dinner every night so she can just kind of focus on doing her homework and then take her own little just breather. Hmm. You know, just making sure I did that. Um, Which was probably not a little thing to her. It was probably huge, huge right? Huge to her. My wife, uh, if I clean up, that is... Foreplay. Sexy to her. Yeah. You know, that I cleaned the uh-huh. dishes and did all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like just really finding those little ways, those little things to minister to her, paying attention to her countenance, mm. talking about her makeup that day. You know, that morning before she leaves out to go to work, do you even say, wow, you look nice, babe, mm. today? Or do you just say, hey, have a good day today? You know, have you, do you compliment her hair still? Do you dress up? When y'all go out or you just throw something on because y'all just gotten familiar with each other and Mm. you forgot how to just please each other. Mm. But when you were dating, man, you made sure you were the cleanest, had had everything trimmed up, shaved (laughs) up, had the right cologne on, everything. But now Mm. you just throw something on and let's go catch a a movie or something evil. Mm. No, do you really take time to pay attention to the details Mm. still? You know, are you paying attention to the details still that made you? Mm pursue each other. You know, those little things that are just practical, they're not spiritual, they're not deep. Do you take her car and wash it as a husband? Hmm. Have you taken her car, had it washed? Do you fill it up with gas? When you're at the gas pump, does she get out and pump the gas with you sitting in the car? That's the rudest thing I think a husband can ever do. If you're at a gas pump, you need to get out and you pump her gas. You don't get, let her get out and pump the gas. Hmm. You know, just little things like that like, that we mm. don't do, that we take for granted. You know, we're just so comfortable in our own little kingdom king world. Mm. You know, you know a, true, a true king dies to himself and he's a servant leader. Mm. I love that. Whoever wants to be great among you, let him first be a servant. That's the principle of the word. Apply it in your home mm. with your spouse. You want to be great? You want to be a great husband? Serve your wife. You want to be a great wife? Serve your husband. One of the things me and Shamika do in, in, in marriage counseling we, with people, we do this little thing where we give each one of them an index card. And we ask them to write down 
three things that you love about each other, you know? You know, so they write those three things down or four or whatever. And then the next question we say, now, write down, I love, first, the first three things is, I love it when you, and then they write down those things, you know, three or four things. I love it when you. And then the next question is, I need you to, and then they write down three or four things that they need you to do. And then here's what we have them do. Once they write them down, once, once the husband write down those things that he love about his wife and the things he needs her to do, we have them read them to each other. Hmm. And then once they read them to each other, we have them give it to each other. Hmm. He gives her his, she gives him hers, and on there, it has on there, I love it when you, as a husband, take out the trash. I love it when you do foreplay with me before marriage, uh, before sex. I love it when you do da-da-da. I need you to do this. And we tell them, listen, hmm. now, your responsibility is to focus on that list. You focus on her card. Hmm. You focus on his card. It erases every bit of self. Because now, my responsibility is to continue to do what you love that I do and then to make sure I am working on these three or four things here to make sure I get those right. So now, mm. again, my focus is on you and not me. Right. I love that, Mike. And one of the things we always want to leave people with is one simple thing that they can do based on what we've talked about. So what if that was the one simple thing that we ask people to do is they do your index card exercise? Could yes. that work? I think that would be amazing. And you have to be honest. Listen, you have to be honest, you know, on these cards. And you, our rules are you have to be honest. And our rules are you cannot get mad. Meaning sometimes on those cards is going to say, I need you to do such and such and such and such. You can't get mad. Hey, what do you mean by that? I always do. No, this is that person's honest mm. heart's desire for you as their spouse. Right. So you have to receive the honesty of it. You got to receive the honesty of yep. it. You got to receive the correction of it. You got to receive it and do it. So don't get mad. Mm. Sit down. Take time out. Really write this down. Exchange those cards and then focus in on those things mm. that you need to do. Now, we normally don't tell people up front that's what's going to happen. We always tell them just do the cards. And then at the end, we tell them now swap. Mm. They, nev they never see that coming. Mm. And uh, that's kind of our clincher. You swap down. They're like, OK, who's cool, swapping? Now you focus on doing that. And you focus, oh, OK. Yeah. You know, because now it again, it, it, it eliminates the need to be selfish. So, you know, and I find with a lot of this stuff, Mike, is. When you first said this, I thought, wow, if we wanted to create an exercise to cause people to fight, this would be a good exercise to do uh, that. Yeah. Like, you know, if yeah. this, I'm just, you see how, where marriages are and how selfish that we can all become, myself yes. included. Yes. When you start too. talking about this, you're going, wow, this could be a catalyst for a fight or this could be a catalyst for connection. And it's all in how you receive it. And knowing that when you're going to your spouse with this and they haven't heard the podcast or maybe they're in a different spot spiritually or whatever, this could, this could be tough. But the, the idea there is to say, here's, I, I love it when you, and I need you to, right? Yes, 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 exactly. And, um, you know, it, 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 when you read it, it really, really brings things right home. It just brings it down to level playing field. Me and my wife, we, you know, we do a lot of traveling. We speak to marriage couples and seminars and we do a lot of premarital counseling and things of this nature and every time we pull this tool out man it just it makes those couples engage each other in such a hmm. very practical but yet intense way yeah because a lot of times you don't even realize hmm. that oh i'm still missing it in that area even me i'm still working on some things right now I went back over my list here while I, I, I folded up and I kept it in my wallet. I switched wallets now. I wish I had the old wallet. I, I would pull it out and show it to you. But I kept it in my wallet and it's really beat up a little bit because we, we, we haven't done it for each other in a few years now. I think it's good to do it probably every year, hmm. to be honest with you. But I looked on that list and I thought, hmm, still need to get better in that area right here. Hmm. You know, one of the things my wife said, I'll be very vulnerable. And one thing she said, you know, I need you to have foreplay before you do the do with me. You know, I didn't realize, you know, that, dang, sometimes I do just kind of jump to it, you know. Yeah. Well, she said, no, I want you to take your time with me. Mm. You know, really, you know, take your time, you know. And I'm saying this because it's in my spirit. I think a lot of couples out there probably can relate to this. You're mm. so busy, you're working and just going crazy that you're not taking time to really mm. 
make love to each other. That's come up several times in this podcast. So obviously it's just in my spirit yeah. and hopefully somebody out there is getting something from it. Absolutely. Get back to the basics, man. Yeah. Well, it's communication too, right? It's yes. like, you know, a lot of guys or people, they don't know. Like they don't know that that's what, but it comes from asking and it comes from learning from each other. So this is a great yeah. simple tool to do that. Mike, thank you so much. Man, thank you guys for having me. I hope I shared something for somebody out there. You did. You shared yeah. some good stuff. You, you've got some motivators through this whole podcast, so I like it. So awesome. all our male audience is loving you right now. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's right. I'm sure they're probably pretty too. angry at me right now. Yeah. Oh, my God, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no. right. Well, uh, send our love to Shamika, and we will have her on the show soon. Awesome. That'll be awesome. Thank Thanks, you sir. so much, Ted. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of the Married People Podcast. We hope that today's episode helps you realize that marriage can be a little easier than you think. And if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd love for you to subscribe to the podcast through whatever podcast app you get your podcasts. And while you're there, we would love for you to leave us a review. Your review will help us make this podcast better and help get these conversations in front of more married couples who need to hear them. And finally, if you'd like to learn more about Minister Mike Owens, we'll have a link to his website and a link to all of his social media on our website, marriedpeople.org slash podcast. But until next time, thanks for listening.